2007 is Bedford ended up in the Supreme Court of Ontario, Bedford versus Canada. This case represented a legal challenge to Canada's prostitution laws filed in the Supreme Court of Ontario, arguing that these laws were unconstitutional. After a series of trials, Justice Susan Himmel ruled in favor of Ms. Bedford, striking down many of Canada's prostitution laws. Please help me in welcoming Ms. Bedford. Thanks. Okay, uh, first of all, could you hold up my book? I'm donating one of, a copy of my book to the library. I think you should read it. Okay, there you go. Thank you. It's called Dominatrix on Trial. Took 17 years to write, and it's hot, hot, hot. It's exceeding all expectations right now in the bookshelves. Thanks. And so, before I begin, I would like to thank Nikki Thomas for being such a wonderful spokesperson for our motion to strike down these appalling laws, which were supposedly against prostitution. And Nikki has told you and will continue to tell you about how, uh, uh, tell you about what is likely to happen if Justice Himmel's ruling is upheld. I have to stick to a script today because um, if I say something, um, out of context, I might hurt somebody. So we're gonna to stick to the script, okay? <laughs> Your parents won't like it very much if I don't, all right? Yeah, they wanna come and spank me. <laughs> I love you guys, I really do, all right? So one thing I'd like to say is we're not here to promote, condone, or condemn prostitution, right? We're, prostitution is legal. And I'm gonna say it again because everybody seems to get a fog over their brain when they hear that. Prostitution in Canada is legal. Just like policing is legal. They have a gun to protect themselves, but the law says we are not allowed to protect ourselves even though we're working in a legal occupation. So I hope I made that clear, okay? So I'm gonna to speak to you today about those who oppose Judge Himmel's decision. And it seems to me there are two types of opponents. First, there are those who know what the decision said and may have even read it. Then there are those who do not know what the decision said, yet have an opinion on it. So I'm going to deal with the second group first. Judge Himmel said in her decision, it was not about whether prostitution is good or bad, or whether it should continue to be legal, or for that matter, what prostitution is or is not. Her 131-page decision after two years of hearings from experts and lawyers, was that the law is seeking to restrict prostitution, whatever that is, excuse me, were unconstitutional. In a nutshell, she said that those laws impacted negatively on those they were supposed to protect. For example, they prevent prostitutes from hiring security, or from working in a regular location. She also said these harmful laws impacted in a discriminatory and arbitrary fashion on a narrow segment of society, on women. Yet, many voices rose saying that prostitution should not be made legal. Duh. Well, first of all, they forget it is. These uninformed voices tell us that prostitution and pimping will increase dramatically, as will human trafficking if the decision of health and nothing else is done. They also tell us prostitution is bad. This is BS. I won't say the full word because we're too young. <laughs> the judge said the evidence does not support the assertions. 
Can I repeat that? The judge said the evidence does not support their assertions, okay? You can read her decision where she looks at other countries and the evidence at length and says why. So please read the decision. I would like to add a couple of other considerations. For one thing, do men who pay prostitutes all of a sudden have unlimited money to ramp up their demand? And for another, prostitution is rampant today. And the current laws, as the judge said, are rarely enforced. Did everybody get that? Good. And something else. Human trafficking and women being illegally exploited in this country occurs across a number of occupations, such as household domestics, farm laborers, office cleaners, and I could go on. The judge did point out the negative aspects of human trafficking and so on, and are addressed by other laws, as this lady knows, immigration, confinement, and assault. And they say prostitution is bad. Well, guess what? I say it's good, <laughs> right? And who are they to decide, for you or I, that we say it's bad, or that we say women uh, who have sex for money are criminals, or if they ask for a favor for it, or dinner? We're not slaves. They say smoking is bad, they say overeating is bad, they say getting drunk is bad. So why, when women exercise free choice in the bedroom, all of a sudden it's bad and she's a criminal? Huh? What's that all about? So why do I say prostitution is good? Well, it's not just me, I think everybody likes sex. All over town, women are getting paid for sex acts right now as I'm speaking. Do you care? Are you going to drop a grade or two because you know somebody's having sex for money next door? Would they do it if it was not good? Well, they wouldn't come and see me. What about the acts that may not be sexual? Well, this is the group that would come and see me. Some of you may have tied up your boyfriend for money and tickled them or had them do it to you. Is that a sex act? Is it illegal? Should you be considered a criminal if your boyfriend pays you to tickle them? I think that women should get a medal when they punish men and take their money. Okay, she can shake her head all that she likes, but she hasn't read the decision. 
But what? But what were those orders? The orders came from Ottawa to make this debate go away. All right, we won't get into that right now, but we will later. Those who have read Herman's decision and seek to overturn it are looking after themselves, for sure. They are also seeking to maintain a status quo that benefits organized crime at the expense of women. Okay, right now, the organized crime, you don't, they don't have to claim their taxes. But if it's made legal, then you can go down and get a license to pay their taxes, and get bank loans and a car, whatever else they need. So what am I telling you all this? I'm sorry. So what I'm... What? <laughs> all right, I'm going to slow down a bit and let's pull myself together. So what I'm telling you is that our opponents are either ignorant of what the debate is about, ignorant about the realities of the sex trade issue, and they're trying to prevent Parliament from framing new laws, new legislation. So, here's my look at your voting. Just think what will happen if Prime Minister Harper has to bring in new legislation. He will have to define what is and what is not sex, or sex act, and he will also have to define who is and who is not a prostitute. Again, I'll have plenty to say about that in the future. But the thing to remember is that the laws cannot be impermissibly vague. I was thrown out of house and home without any, without any uh, evidence that I was a prostitute in my home and I had to go through the courts for seven years. They took my, all my belongings, everything, and my anonymity. This means they must tell us exactly what we can and cannot do in the privacy of our own home between consenting adults and why he wishes to make prostitution illegal. So do you want Prime Minister Harper to control your sexuality and tell you what you can and cannot do with your body in the privacy of your home or business? That's what it's going to come down to. All right, so there's, there's the seed I'm planting in your head right now. The government will decide what you can do in your home, in your bedroom, with Mr. or Mrs. Jones or whoever, for money or not. Our opponents do not want that discussion to happen. Oh, no, no, no. They just want some vague and indirect legal and moral condemnation of sex for money to appear to be the policy of this country. I say to you here today what a number of academic papers that have been sent to me since this began are saying. We must move away from a moral basis for legislation on this issue and towards a safety basis. Okay? Once again, we're not here to promote, condone, or condemn the prostitute. We want women, we don't want women to lose control of their bodies or their lives. Our countries hopefully are moving forward in emancipating women. Don't allow Prime Minister Harper to move us backwards. Our goal, once again, is safe working conditions and clear laws that are based on safety, not morality. Thank you very much.